we're going to look at some reactions of acid chlorides. Uh, they're the most reactive carboxylic acid functional group. And this first one is a hydrolysis to a carboxylic acid, which you could do under acidic, basic, or neutral conditions. What we're going to look at is a common way to do this under neutral conditions. So this does happen to be, uh, if you look back at our chart, it's type 2D like. Um, but we're taking our carboxylic acid with water and converting that to the carboxylic acid, uh, we know this is going to be relatively slow as written. What you can actually do is add a base like pyridine, But we're not going to classify this as true basic conditions because it's not a negatively charged base. Pyridine looks like this. So we're still going to consider this neutral conditions. And what that means is, as we go through the mechanism, this is going to be one of those times where we can have positives and negatives both in the mechanism because the conditions are neutral. So the way that this is going to work, first we take the water and we add it. And this step actually isn't all that slow because carboxylic acids are so reactive and so electrophilic. So we have the nucleophilic attack. Here's our intermediate that has both a positive and negative charge on it. From here, now we can lose our leaving group. And in this case, the chlorine is actually a better leaving group than the positively charged oxygen. And then from here, use the pyridine as a base. You take that proton off of the oxygen, giving you the carboxylic acid. Plus this pyridinium ion and Cl minus which this just forms um, a salt that falls out of the solution. You can do an identical reaction to convert an acid chloride to an ester. So instead of water, you would just add an alcohol. So let's say we wanted to make the propyl ester. And we would also add pyridine. And what you end up with is the ester product. It's the same exact mechanism as reaction one. It's just instead of 
water, which we did in reaction one, we're using this alcohol. So if you want to fast forward through that, you can, because really you probably already know it. Um, but for those of you that want some extra clarity, I will go ahead and walk you through the mechanism here. So here's your alcohol. Add that first. Sometimes in the mechanism, people will go ahead and take pyridine and remove this proton. Um, if you do that, that's fine. Um, but experimentally, it's thought that instead, the chlorine is lost first. And then finally, the pyridine will come in and take the proton. The third reaction we're going to look at is conversion of an acid chloride to an amide. And this is very similar to what we've been learning. Let's just say you have This acid chloride, you want to convert it to an amide. Well, instead of an alcohol or water, we'll use an amine as the nucleophile. So let's say we want a methyl amide. I'll use methyl amine. Now, before, what we would do is add pyridine as a base to help this reaction progress. Well, pyridine is a nitrogen base. So why add that extra reagent when this amine right here can act as both the nucleophile and the base? So for this reaction, it's better to add two equivalents of the amine. So the first equivalent will act as a nucleophile. And just like we've been doing, add that nucleophile to the carbonyl carbon push the pi electrons up onto the oxygen. So now we have the bond to the nitrogen. And that still has the two hydrogens and the methyl and a positive charge. All right, from here, just like we've been doing, push that charge back down to form the carbonyl, and we'll lose the chlorine as the leaving group. So we get this intermediate, which is where normally we would bring in pyridine to take the proton off. But now, since we have two equivalents of the amine, that second equivalent acts as a base. 
So we'll use the lone pair on that nitrogen to take one of those protons to give you the product. And then the byproduct here would be the protonated amine. And that would just hang out with the chloride ion to form this amine salt.